and good morning everyone and welcome to this day. It is Friday the 19th and uh, got some beautiful, uh, cool weather. This is the coolest day of the week out there. Uh, it's not going to last though. I'll tell you about that coming up in just a moment. Uh, on our show today, Maggie Blackwell is here. She is the secretary on the United Board. Is going to talk about uh, landscape and uh, all about that and the landscape budget. Also, we have Mayor Cynthia Connors and she has the uh, city council report. They have their meeting on Wednesday, so she's going to tell us all about that. Then we have a couple guests from the Capitol Opera. They've been on before, and I think I'm trying to think how long ago they were on. It might have, I don't know if it was like six months ago or so, but they're going to be appearing at the uh, Geneva Presbyterian Church. So we'll find out about that. And also we're going to bring you a segment, the African American Club. Uh, they are going to be having um, an event coming up, so. We're going to repeat a segment we did early in the week because their event is tomorrow. All right, so now as far as um, meetings, well, it's not really a meeting. A third has their uh, new resident orientation. If you're watching us in the morning, that's 9 o'clock in the boardroom. Let's get to the weather. And we've had a wonderful stretch of really drastically below normal temperatures. Like you're, we're talking about 10 degrees or more below like today. However, uh, enjoy today. Tomorrow to warm up just a tad. Sunday we're going to get a jump up uh, quite a bit uh, into the 80, uh, 81. And then Monday and Tuesday we get some humidity with this because this is coming in from the east uh, as far as the high pressure system. But the way it is, it's going to pull up monsoonal moisture from uh, Baja, California in that area to the point that as we get into next week, uh, we could see thunderstorms in Riverside and uh, the mountains in those areas, uh, you know, places like Big Bear and maybe even some of the uh, desert communities. Uh, not for us, but you're going to start to feel that humidity. Uh, we may start getting clouds in along with that on um, next week. Uh, you know, right now it's a little iffy, but you know how that goes. We get that uh, humidity. This is not unusual this time of the year. So you can see I have 85 on Tuesday. So if anything, it could be warmer than that. I'm kind of just looking ahead. There are going to be areas just, you know, five miles from here inland that are going to be looking at uh, upper 90s. So we're going to go from way below normal to normal to, well, the humidity. That's kind of normal for July and August. Here we are around the area of the state. And as you can uh, see up in the north coast, really uh, northern California going to be partly cloudy in the areas that are coastal. Coastal communities, the Bay Area, the North Coast, which is Eureka. Central Coast, uh, usually I get the temperature from San Luis Obispo. So they're going to be really nice. Uh, however, if you're going to go right out to, like, say, Cambria, uh, they'll have the fog in the morning. That'll start to clear up. And as you go down to the southern part of the state, things are going to start to clear up and are going to be pretty nice. Maybe a tiny bit of that coastal stuff, but it will not stick around. Uh, Palm Springs will shoot back up to about 110. That will be their average for uh, if you combine today, Saturday, and Sunday. That's usually what I do for these temperatures. Very warm in Yosemite, actually very hot for them, 92. Tahoe and Arrowhead, both about 80 degrees. So it's going to be uh, start to warm up um, around the state uh, this weekend. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. When your sticker package arrives, follow the simple instructions on the envelope. It's important to know that the sticker must be adhered to the inside of your vehicle before driving on a tolled bridge, lane, or road. There! You're all set to go out and enjoy the drive. A new drive awaits on the toll roads of Orange County. I've been working with retirees since 1984. I specialize in, in protecting people's money, setting up a secure retirement income stream for them, and making sure their money is there when they need it. I started Sterling Financial Advisors under the premise that we not only needed quality service for clients out there in the financial industry, but ethical standards as well. We don't have any monopoly on the investments we use. What we do have a monopoly on is the integrity and in how we treat our clients. I'm Wendy Miller, your Smiley Realtor with Remax and your Laguna Woods Real Estate Specialist. 
I'm here today with the first of my seven home selling tips for seniors. Some seniors prefer to rely on the real estate agent who has sold the most properties in their neighborhood. Others seek the most often recommended from family and friends. The right professional will ask questions about your future goals. He or she will help you decide upon a realistic listing price and answer all of your questions promptly before asking you to sign a listing agreement. Give me a call and I will help you make the right move. Individual care, specialized care, at Harvard Eye Associates, we care about your vision and quality of life. Our trusted doctors provide a wide range of multi-specialty services for the treatment of medical eye conditions, all within one practice. Come join the circle of care at Harvard Eye Associates, where the future of vision is today. And Maggie Blackwell is with me from United, and uh, we're in the, I don't want to, well, kind of the tail end of budget season. We're getting there because it's presented in, on TV in August. Right. And I think you guys are Friday, are you Friday the 11th? You're going to, August 11th? We are 11th? Thursday, oh, well, I forget. August 9th is Friday. August 9th, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but along with that, uh, you present that, but then you tweak it a little bit more, but by then it's pretty well set in stone. Right, right. Okay. So you're going to talk about yes, that. Yes, right? I am. Uh, this is the budget season. Actually, the second half of every mm -hmm. year is the budget season. It's the most painful time of year. Uh, people, <laughs> think, people think when they come in here that the fees are set and that's the way they will stay forever. And unfortunately, our buildings and everything get older and they've heard about that. And so they know that if we don't do the supply lines, if right. we don't epoxy the supply lines, then people will have a whole lot of difficulty in their unit, mm -hmm. and costs will go up yeah. astronomically, not only for them, but for United too. And this, so we have, to, we have to be preparing for everything we have to pay. If you have an old car, it costs more to service it. A new right. car, you just take it in, oil change, whatever, it's fast. This happens. And people don't want to accept it. They want it the same as always. And we can't do that. Uh, for the budget calendar, budget, we have five meetings on the budget. We had one on May 30th, one on May 31st. We had one on June 19th. Now we have J July 11th is coming up. And then oh, we had that. And then we have August 9th and September 10th. So that's May, June, July, August, and September. Yeah. So it's five years. It's not a surprise. And it, it amazed me at the meeting, the board meeting this, year, this month, that a couple of directors were astounded that, that and, and proclaiming that the preliminary budget was the final budget. The preliminary budget is what staff puts together mm -hmm from all our past and current data, we're, we're of course only halfway through the year. Right. And they put together <clears throat> what the budget is and what, what they actually spent on each year. And then they are supposed to put on what it would take to make us happy. In other words, if yes. we say we're underfunded in this, we don't have enough money for this, and we tell them during the year we need more for this, mm -hmm. or we take it out of the reserves, or we just say we have to plan better next year. And so they are trying to make it the preliminary budget is the initial budget. That is the one that says we're going to do everything we did before, and we're going to go up to the service level that the village desires. So you know how United right, members are. Right. They always want it better. They want more service in landscape. They want more service everywhere. And so that is what the preliminary plan is. It is the status quo or past, mm -hmm. uh, but it makes the status quo like perfectly s sensible. And so they bump things up a little. If we had this, then, then we would have no complaints and we would have an easier time solving this problem. Right. And so on. And so that is the preliminary budget. 
Now, one director on United forgot what preliminary was, and he thought that this was the final budget. This was the final budget. And so he's been running around telling people, oh, it's going to be horrible, it's going to be horrible, the sky is falling. The sky is not falling. This happens every year. I'm surprised. This is his third year. I'm surprised he hasn't recognized it before. So we have, mm -hmm. we have phase one, and I will go over this for landscape and talk too much probably, but this is what we will, this is what the landscape budget looks like right now. Now staff has been told, no, we are not going to go for this perfect picture. We're going to have to cut back and cut back and cut back. Right. <clears throat> but an interesting thing to note is third pays $30 a month more for their assessments than United does. What did they get that is so different from us? Well, perhaps I'll talk, talk, talk about that in the end. Maybe, maybe we don't know why, but they have the same landscape mm -hmm. activities that we do, and they don't have to replace refrigerators and right, stoves right. and everything. So <clears throat> might that be a clue that we are underfunded? It might be because our people get more service than they right, do. Right, right. So anyway, after that plug, I will go on. <laughs> this is what we have going down the items as presented. The first item is shrub bed maintenance, and in a perfect world, we would bump that up 13%. Shrub bed maintenance is shrub bed raking, weeding, mulching, replanting, edging of planters, and so on. The cycle varies seasonally, and we have 75 shrub bed acres in United Mutual. It takes 12 weeks for one complete coverage in United, except we're trying something new. Now we're going to send out just one or two workers per cul-de-sac, so that every, but every <coughs> cul-de-sac seems like it has workers. And they work alone with, with, a, with a bush trimmer, and they trim the trees from wherever they can stand. If a tree branch is low, they just go with the bush trimmer like okay. that. I was amazed. He was, oh, how strong are you to wave this, this big bush trimmer over your head for hour yeah. after hour trimming? <clears throat> and then he goes over to the bushes and he sculpts them very carefully and so on. And then he puts all the stuff. So he's working as a single person. Okay. And so that goes on ahead, and then the other team comes back later. And the, the, our teams, the mowers are the same guys that do the shrub beds and so on. They have so many tasks to do. But this is shrub bed. That's our most important. And so we upped it. We said in a perfect world, we would like an increase of 13%. And that would help us move faster and get, so, get more things done. Uh, the second thing is our lawn maintenance. We had a director at an earlier meeting that said our lawns everywhere were one foot deep. So I put a bag on the, on the table that was one foot tall. I said, you mean your grass is this foot deep everywhere? I said, show me pictures. So we brought in some very carefully extracted weeds. And so I praised him for pulling weeds and encouraged him to do more. But I said, <laughs> I said, you, you, our, our turf is not this high. It would be up to your knees with every step. And particularly with Kukuya, would be walking yeah. on crunched mattress kind of thing. So anyway, lawn maintenance uh, is seasonal. Summer we mow every seven to nine days, fall nine to 14. Uh, winter 14 to 21 days. Dethatching is the new item that we would like. See, if we yeah. could do this, we would do dethatching. That's very good for the lawn, makes it healthy mm -hmm. and much more beautiful. Uh, it hasn't been done re recently, and that is the extra up, it's up 13%. That is what the extra would cost, dethatching. And that would be wonderful. And and. Any other hotel or any other group would be doing that because they can charge whatever they want. Yeah, and people right. still come. Uh, we we have to be careful. So <clears> that <throat> may be something that goes. And when you look at the grass and you say it looks horrible, it might be because it's all thatched stuff. Right, right. And yeah. so so there will be allowed no complaints if we have to give up dethatching. Okay. Cannot complain. All right. Then there's small equipment repair. Well, when these guys are working around, they use equipment. Yeah. You have to repair it. This also, these guys in the small equipment repair also deliver the equipment. 
every afternoon, you'll see between three and yes, four o'clock, the trucks <clears throat> go yeah. out and they deposit everything the workers will need the next morning, mm -hmm. except the nursery delivery comes later. And so they are needed and they do, they help receive supplies and orders and they refurbish everything. They take care of the mowers. We have to have that. You cannot just say, okay, we're not going to repair our <clears throat> equipment. Another group is miscellaneous tasks. And this one is up 43%. I'm not quite sure why, except for the storms. This is the group or the, the category that preps for storms, puts out the sandbags and so on, and repairs storm damage. They also prep for the paint crew. They prep for fumigation. You have to wrap mm -hmm. the plants up right. you know, and so on. And then they have to clean up the creeks after the storms. And that is a huge process sometimes. Right. Right. And this varies per year. And you think, oh, this storm is gone. It's all right. And they all come out. And some of them have to come on the weekend and so on. And the more storms we have, the more we use them. And the more overtime we have to pay. And so if this were a perfect world, we'd jump it up 43%. <coughs> it's not a huge budget item, but we would jump it up. The next item is our nursery. Our nursery is a wonderful saving device for us. Right. Because we, every plant we plant, we have, we have grown in our nursery. Mm -hmm. Most of the trees are grown in our nursery. Almost everything that saves us a fortune from going to buy it from somebody else. It also gives us a good choice. We can say, we'll put this with this and this with this. And it gets delivered by our own people right to the spot right. where they have to plant it. And so that's good. The nursery will be up 21% because there are parts of the nursery that have not been reshaped or tended to. We need some renovation of the nursery. And so if we renovate the nursery, that, that will go up 21%. In a perfect world, we would want that. We have to decide. Our landscape administration, of course, Pl supplies support to the mutual boards and committees. The administrative staff provides customer service, prepares work reports, annual operating budgets, and so on. That's only going up 3%. It's like just this big. So th that will probably be OK. Pest control is going up because we know it's going up because we know that, that the alternatives to the Roundup are more expensive, not that right. more expensive, but it will cause us to go up. So it will be up 21%. We're also using growth retardants. So you can have a wonderful plant like lantana, very colorful, mm -hmm. and bougainvillea, very colorful, very beautiful, nasty thorny, but, but very nice. And those things usually, if you grow them outside or in the wild, they get big and they would cover everything right. in 10 minutes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, we put a growth retardant on them and then we can, they're very hardy and they don't use much water. So this is an ideal plant for yeah. us. So then we can keep them in the smaller areas, like an area like this. We can plant, we can plant lantana there and it blooms over and over throughout the year. It looks really good and it's a hardy little plant. And it's great as long as we can keep it little. So we use growth retardants. So our pest control and growth retardants, and this includes weeds, insects, ants, wasps, bees, rodents, and everything else that is a pest. And growth retardant comes under this kind of controlling thing. So that would be up a little bit. Slope maintenance is something we're going to contract out. And we're contracting out those, the big slopes. It's like if you enter gate one, there's a huge slope on the left. Mm -hmm. And there are other yeah. places. Third has a million slopes. United has several. But we're thinking of contracting that out. If we contract that out, then our laborers get to keep doing right. the regular work. And that's really what we want. We want more service. And I, I think, isn't that what um, Third's Third is doing the same doing thing. That. And yeah. they, have, they have humongous slopes everywhere. Right, right. You enter gate. Yeah. It's just tremendous what they have. So up, that would be up 12%, but it does free our workers to do other tasks. And so that's really important for us. I hope we keep that one. Uh, the next one is composting. This is another fortune saver for us. So we make our own compost. We don't have to buy mulch. 
and we don't have to haul all the clippings from things mm -hmm. off to the, the dump. Right. See, hauling it off to the dump is one expense, and then buying a mulch at a store is another expense. Right. So we <coughs> mulch our own <coughs> stuff, mm -hmm. and that's why we have the tub grinder, which we are purchasing, and so that will be up 8%, which is just nothing, but they save us hundreds of thousands right. every year. The next one is uh, our reserves. This is important. Our reserves, we had a $50,000 reserve study this year, which was instigated by a director who was unhappy with many things on the board and said, you need, you need a reserve evaluation. So we did have a reserve study. And what we found was that we are two years from being in the red zone for special assessments. We are underfunded in our reserves. And so that director was very angry with that report, and he wants to throw it out the window. Now that we have it, he doesn't want to follow it. But this is scary, because here we are up here. In two years, we will be in the red zone. We will be in the red zone for reserve contributions. Okay. <clears throat> in other words, we run the risk of having to assess our members special assessments to the tune of six or seven thousand dollars or whenever we need it. It's okay. like a small CID just bills people when they need and all of a sudden they've got a six thousand dollar bill yeah. because they're <clears throat> roofing the place. Mm -hmm. Well we are doing everything. We're trying to collect assessments gradually because this is the way we're paid. We're retired. We don't get big bursts of money from right, things. Right. So we, we have to pay things slowly. And that's why, that's why it is very important for us to re maintain our reserves. The study suggested, it didn't suggest, it recommended that we bump it up $7.76, I believe it was the price, per year, per month, per month, $7.76. And we don't think we're going to go that high. It would be crucially important, though, for us to stay out of that red zone. And that means that may be the difference that third has. I have no idea what they have. But that would clearly okay. be an easy difference. So <clears throat> we do need, because we can't run it out of money. If we, if we use our reserves, like we're using now, right. Uh, for <clears throat> for the uh, waistline remediation, mm -hmm. we run out of money. We do no more waistline remediation. We do no, no more what? What do we stop doing in MNC? What do we stop doing? The roofs, or the plumbing, right? Or the electric? Yeah. What do we stop? Where would you like us to cut? And when we run out, so we can't do that. So we would have to make a special assessment, and that's that's just sudden. <coughs> it's Unpredictable, <clears throat> a lot of small CIDs do it because they can't have reserves or right. they don't choose to have reserves. And so I will plug the reserves. I say we need to be very careful not to be underfunded. That is the first thing we cut every year. We say, oh no, we don't need so much to go to the reserves. Well, yes, we do. These years we're using up the reserves and we're using our contingency fund for various things. And those things need to be paid back so that we have some predictability and ability to control what is happening in the future. I mean, you can't leave yourself without any right. funds. Yeah. That's the most important thing. So please, uh, we still have until September. The final vote is in September, second week mm -hmm. of September. Every meeting from now on will be cutting, cutting here, cutting there, fighting about this, fighting about <laughs> that. Does MNC win over landscape? Well, quite possibly so. But, but so we have to consider everything. And my, my question to the resident is, what do you want us to cut? We're, we're your service agency. Do you want us to stop doing the, the maintenance? Do you want us to stop doing the pavement? Do you want us to stop right. doing? What do you want us to stop doing? Because we are in a bind now. <clears throat> um, $30 short, less than third for years, is, has, yeah. has put us in a precarious position. All right. Maggie, thank you very much. Okay. I really appreciate it.
Okay. You thank take you. care. Have a good weekend. Okay. We'll be right back. The American Legion, we're a powerful force for the nation. We're the largest veteran service organization in the nation with two and a half million members. And when you add to that the American Legion Auxiliary and the Sons of the American Legion, we have a family of four million members working hard every day for our veterans, our youth, and our communities. Go to legion.org to find out more about the American Legion's commitment of service to America. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials, at 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Having great home care is as easy as one, two, three. I'm Lori Renaud with ActiCare Responsive In-Home Care. We can provide the perfect caregiver for you to receive exceptional care in the comfort of your home. Step one, call to schedule a care consultation. Step two, meet with a registered nurse in your home. Step three, start receiving care. Aging doesn't have to be difficult. Call today to get the help you deserve. When you travel with AAA, you get more than a vacation. You get exclusive AAA member benefits, special offers on unforgettable experiences, and the travel planning knowledge of your own AAA travel agent. When you travel with AAA, you get the vacation of your dreams. To save on a pleasant holidays vacation, visit your local AAA travel agent today. choice for wood flooring and more is LA Carpet. Now during their two-day sale, visit their showroom now and get 65% off wood flooring, laminate, and waterproof flooring. Plus, get five-year, 0% financing. LA Carpet, number one for you. I'm, we're, we're having a little laugh here because uh, Cynthia Connors, the mayor of the city of, La, of uh, Laguna Woods, has a little... I, I guess to be fair, you have Starbucks, you should have... What's the other one? Coffee bean Coffee and tea. Bean. I'm going to talk about them today. Okay, okay, good. That's equal time. Equal time. <laughs> All right. Actually, you know, it's amazing in a place, a city this small, you got two Starbucks. Three. Three Starbucks. Three. There's Where's a drive the through. One? At the corner of Moulton and El Toro. Oh, okay, that's right. So I figure if that's we have, right. That's yeah. If we have three Starbucks and a coffee bean, we're definitely you're, trending. You're doing. You're <laughs> doing good. All right, you got several things you want to talk about. You gave me a list here, but if you want to go in a different order, we can do that. Um, we'll start with the list. Okay, um, so Memorial Care, uh, in the former Chase Bank building, which is right next to you guys, right next to Aldi, yeah. and uh, they are going to be. Um, Memorial Care will be putting a doctor's office right. in there. It came in front of the city council because um, we, what we want in our, uh, in our non-residential land use is to provide a good mix of places for people to shop and dine mm -hmm. and get professional services all close to home. And so uh, the Chase Bank was formerly a commercial use for that building. So Memorial Care had to come to us to apply to convert it to professional use. So they're planning to have doctor's okay. offices there um, for the, the people who are part of the memorial care system. Okay. And um, <clears throat> it'll be, I think, 11 examining rooms and four doctors seeing patients on any particular day. But it's Great. Not, not urgent care or drop-in care. It's just you make an appointment to go see your doctor and you go Okay. There. Okay, but we're really pleased that that Aldi shopping center is really filling up now. It's been renovated and, right. and all the, lot, most of the vacant spaces are now occupied. And so it's giving our residents more opportunities to find places to go. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now the dog park is opening, uh, coming up a week from tomorrow. 
and uh, you put something here, and I'm not official leash cutting. <laughs> yes, well, we won't have a ribbon cutting. We'll have you have a, a big cutting. old leash. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We have to have a big old scissor for yeah, that, too. Then. Yeah. Um, and we've arranged for parking across the street. Uh, there's a traffic light there. Right. And uh, the street name is Peralta, and there's a little office park on the other side. And so people who come can park over on the Peralta side and cross at the light. Okay. And that's at 9 a.m., not this Saturday, a week from this Saturday. Correct. And Very good. bring your dog. Okay. And then you're um, repealing the anti solicitation mm. panhandling ordinance, and it's been ruled unconstitutional. Explain that. It me. wasn't exactly our ordinance that was ruled unconstitutional, but it was on another ordinance right. in Sacramento with the same provisions. <clears throat> we had passed an ordinance that prohibited um, solicitation, asking for money basically. Uh, within 10 feet of an ATM or in an underground parking lot or um, in a harassing or intimidating mm -hmm. or threatening manner. Okay. And the part that limits the speech according to where it is has been, you know, that you can't do certain kinds of speech in certain kinds of places. That was ruled a violation of the First Amendment by a federal court in Sacramento. Okay. So um, despite the fact that I feel personally more comfortable if there isn't someone asking for money standing right at my shoulder when I'm using the right. ATM. Um, that's not something that the city can regulate. But if I do feel threatened, harassed, or intimidated, I can always call 911 okay. and the sheriff will respond. All right, that's kind of a strange one because I, I've always wondered about that, how is asking for money free speech? I can say, I can see if somebody's like doing something else mm -hmm. or you're part of an organization, you set up a table like you know Girl Scouts yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you can ask but, for money for the Girl Scouts, or you can ask yeah. for money for poppies for the veterans. Right. Or you can ask for money for yourself. And, yeah. Uh, and in the eyes of the, of the law, it's all the same. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. So um, we're going to move on now. And one of the things you have here, uh, um, barbecue. S the s fire tell me about that. The fire department is going to give a presentation on barbecue safety tips. And it's going to be on August 14 at 10 a.m. at City Hall. And most of the people who barbecue here have been barbecuing for a long time, and they're pretty sure they know what they're doing. Right. But it never hurts to have a refresher and to learn more about, I don't know, new kinds of fire extinguishers or whatever else. Yeah, and um, when is that again? Can you mention that, Sure, please? I'll mention it again. It is on um, Wednesday, August 14, okay. at 10 a.m. Very good. And, um, and the, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really good, because it's home fire and barbecue safety. Yeah in general, and for somebody who owns three barbecues, myself, you know, safety, <laughs> well, one charcoal, one gas, and a smoker. I, I see, mean, come okay. on. Um, you know, <laughs> safety first. A true grill master, yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, safety first, I mean, seriously. Okay. And I have a fire extinguisher and all that, but, you know, a little extra tips does not hurt. That's true. Um, and Very because good. we live right on top of each other here in the village, any fire that might start in one person's kitchen or one person's uh, candle or anything else really impacts sure. up, you know, up to half a dozen a or more one. families. So hang on to that. All right, now, here's promised, a good one. Now, I promised equal time bean. to the coffee yeah. bean and tea leaf. They are hosting Coffee with a Cop. That's on Thursday, July 25, from 8 to 10. Uh, uh, law enforcement allowing. Great. Uh, the police officers who serve our community will be there and you can meet them, you can bring them your complaints if you have any, or you can just, you know, shake their hand. Maybe and get buy them a coffee. Yeah, maybe or buy a donut. them a coffee. Yes. And I have to say, I went there last time, and when you walk in the door, there's four or five uniformed officers standing around. Yeah. And it, it can be a little intimidating, even to a person like me who is, you know, the mayor of the city that contracts yeah. to provide yeah. this service. Uh, but it's... It's just very useful to get to know them and to be up close and personal with a police officer when you're not in a time of crisis. Because right. Right. usually when we see policemen we're, or police women, we are uh, getting a ticket or we're having a disaster in our house or, you know, they're showing up at a time when we're not at our best. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and... Um, very good. So just to be able to have a casual conversation I think is a good thing. And that is um, next week, Thursday, next July Thursday, 25th. July 25th. Okay. So. Very good. Now, um, if uh, you know, we'll, we'll mention some of these things again. And you mentioned the 
the Dog Park Grand Opening. So there you go, which is uh, next Saturday, July 27th at 9 a.m., a place for paws. And I just want to mention the Orange County Fair. August 8th, Thursday, <clears throat> will be Laguna Woods Day at the Fair. Oh, great. All that really means is that we get the name of our city mentioned at the time of the flag raising at noon over the hangar on that day. Okay. But I'll be there. No free corn dogs? No free corn dogs. Okay. All right. Not even a free deep fried Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much, Mayor. Always a pleasure. Always good to see you. Thank you, you take care, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Brian Rott, President and CEO of Cartmart here in Laguna Woods. My family's been in the golf cart business since 1959, and we win our customers over with the simple belief of, we treat you right. We are proud to be the authorized dealer for Club Cart here in Orange County, and your go-to source for the sales and service to other major brands. We're conveniently located on El Toro Road, just minutes from Laguna Woods. So come by and see for yourself, while when doing business with Cartmart, there's no reason to go anywhere else. Mind and Memory Program at Mission Hospital is an outpatient program specifically designed for patients with a memory disorder who have developed a mental health issue, such as depression, anxiety, or paranoia. Patients are welcome every day, Monday through Friday, up to four days a week. On-site meals and snacks are included, and transportation to and from the program is available. The program focuses on improvement in overall mood, function, and concentration, as well as a decrease in depression or anxiety. Call today to find out if you or your loved one qualifies for the Mind and Memory Program. One of the more common violations that we see in the village is stop sign violations. Now the section is based on the California Vehicle Code which requires uh, drivers to stop behind the limit line. Now uh, as you can imagine we, we commonly hear about the, the California stop which really isn't a stop at all but a slow or a roll and that's, that's one of the things that we'd like to educate our members of to, to come to that stop uh, sign, uh, stop behind the limit line. Uh, pause briefly before uh, moving through the intersection. Yeah. We take videos, uh, the traffic security officers take videos for the traffic uh, sessions when the po people come before us. And it's absolutely amazing, if I might uh, indicate, the stop sign is right here. People will physically stop at this particular area and then drive through. However, there's a white limit line right ahead of us that you must stop at. The rule says you must stop at that limit line. However, there are cases where there is no limit line available, but you must still stop, look both ways, then proceed. And these are the things we explain to people, and it's very, very well taken, believe it or not. People will actually thank us for the information which they did not understand. And a lot of times they'll just roll right on through there. I've had them go through at 10, 15 miles an hour, not even think about hesitating. So in this example, we have one of our own actors, a member of the security division, actually uh, approaching the limit line. And, and you'll see, um, possibly in a little bit of a rush, what have you, he slows, but then he zips right through uh, the, the stop sign. And that is something that, that we're, we're trying to educate our folks on to just, again, take that few extra seconds, come to a full stop uh, before moving forward. Before I tell you what I'm about to tell you, let me tell you that it's very important that you listen to what I'm going to tell you. Looking good, Albert. The people have spoken and want a man of action. Mmm, real gold? They want a leader who will stare boredom in the face and say, not on my watch. Insert me, Rob Riggle, the new mayor of Funner, California. It's not a word, it's a place. I started Sterling Financial under the premise that there was a need for integrity in this industry as well as quality service. There's such volatility in the stock market. They, you know, one day it could be up 100 points, the next day it could be down 500 points. Well, what we like to do is be able to have people go to bed and wake up the next morning knowing that their money is safe and secure. That's what we try to do here at Sterling Financial Advisors is to create peace of mind and quality of life in retirement.
With me right now are a couple guests from the Capitol Opera, and uh, they have been on before, but we're going to find out uh, all about them and then an, uh, an event that is coming up next week, a week from today, actually. So I'd like to welcome Kathleen Torchia, and she is the creative director, um, actually founder and general director of Capitol Opera. And then uh, Calvin, is it Lee? Lai. Lai. And uh, you're with Capital Opera as well. Yes. You're one of the creatives behind it. And yes. first, um, you know, you've been on before, but let's kind of go over what Capital Opera is. Because if somebody looks at it online and sees your logo and all, they go, was it out of Washington, D.C.? <laughs> is it out of our state capital? So explain that well, to us. Well, um, in 1990, I, I had been training opera singers for years, and there mm -hmm. were several of them who were ready to do roles and there, was, there were no opportunities to do that. So I yeah. finally decided I had to create opportunities. And it really, people <clears throat> came from all over the country. Artists came because they said there was nothing between the uh, university and the professional company. And to get into the professional company, you had to have some experience. Yeah, that made, I, <laughs> yeah. I could see that, yeah. So we sort of pioneered the community opera um, company. And we, um, our mission is to provide performing opportunities to uh, both developing and professional artists, and also to bring affordable performances to the communities okay. we serve. All right, and that, you know, that makes a lot of sense because you know you don't really think about it, but um, the world of opera is probably pretty small. Uh, it is. And so, <laughs> it, it's probably very hard to go from one thing to the other and find these opportunities for yes. folks who maybe don't want to become full professionals. That's right. Much like in the sports community, you know, to find something sort of in between. Yeah, they, yeah. De they dedicate a lot to yeah. their training, and <clears throat> so they want to be able to do something with it. Yeah. So uh, this one, again, is coming in next Friday at the um, per, um, Geneva Presbyterian Church. Are you, are you, when I went online and looked at your website, at least the way I saw it, they're like branches, or I call them yes. chapters, yes. throughout. Yes. the country, yes. regional, yes. and do they travel around? Is that how that works? Well, when we decided <clears throat> to name Capital Opera Sacramento as such, uh, we decided there should be one of these in every capital city. So that okay. was the original goal, and then my ah. husband got became ill, and I had to take care of him for several years. So uh, that was put on hold for a while, but then um, we're trying now, we're moving, the next one is going to be in Utah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. Uh, Calvin, is this one, you're local here, right? Yes. It, but, um, so you live here in Orange County or do you travel around with the opera? Well, I do live in Orange County as, as does Kathleen okay. now. And yes, we do travel with, uh, with the shows. We'll, we'll uh, go to um, one, of our, one of our cities and usually our, our talent is from that general area. Okay. We tried to definitely to, to cast local artists. Mm -hmm. So they're all from, for this performance, they're all from Southern California. Okay, but they do, some of them do travel around if mm -hmm. you need some people and, yes. okay. Yes, yes. Now, um, as far as this performance goes, this will be again next Friday, a week from today, at Geneva Presbyterian. And you have um, 7.30 on Friday, 7.30 p.m. on Friday the 26th, and then Saturday, at 2.30 p.m. the 27th. That's correct. So these are, are there people that are um, living here in the village, any of them are into opera? Most of our audience is Laguna Woods. Okay. Woods. I used to live here. Oh, you did, yes, okay. Before my husband was hospitalized, we owned a, a place here. And uh, yes, so many, many of our audience members are from uh, Laguna Woods. Okay. Yes. Tell me about, Calvin, tell me about this performance. What uh, does this entail? I mean, I'm looking at, some of the notes you folks sent, and it says two comedic one acts. But yes. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I know very little about opera, so. Well, it, it's, it's a term called opera buffo, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm correct. Opera, yeah. And so uh, these are written in the, uh, in the uh, 1700s, uh, and, and uh, they are funny, and they are, um, <laughs> it, it's, it's kind of the precursor to a romantic comedy. Okay. <clears throat> so if you think about, <clears throat> pardon me, if you think about it in that way, uh, it's a kind of an, it's kind of like the, the, the early beginnings of, of, of musical comedy. Well, and a lot of opera is tragic. So right. we have done so much tragic opera in the last several years. We decided we were going to do something fun this year. I think a lot of people might be thinking, okay, is it in English? Um, no, but it's it will be very easy to understand okay. because well, we put a detailed synopsis in the program, okay. but also. Um, 
we insist that our, it's all about the performers at mm -hmm. Capital Opera. We insist that our performers can act, express, and move. Okay. So they will, there's nothing they won't understand. Now, why is that there's not too many operas in English? Is it just because the genre of it is, uh, is it usually Latin? Am I no, right? No, it's, uh, it's Italian, German, French, some, some okay. Russian. Uh, actually, uh, it all started, I believe, in Italy. So that's, there, there were a lot in Italian. Okay. And then um, there are a few English ones, but most of the ones in English language are contemporary, fairly, n not even in public domain. Okay. Yeah, so, so we have to do, we, we do the operas that are in okay. public domain so that we yeah, don't have to pay these huge uh, right. fees. Yes. And Calvin, how long is the performances? The performances, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> the performances are usually run um, um, about two, two and a half hours. Okay. All in right. total. And this we're doing two, won't. two hours. This one won't. This oh, one, this yeah, one's shorter? These are, yeah, the first one's about 45 minutes and the second one's about 50 minutes. Okay, and it's uh, $20 per person, yes. right? And you can get at the door or you can get it online if you'd like to do it that way. And um, it's, I'm, it's ticketleap.com? Yes. Is that what it says? Well, okay. Well, yes. Is it ticketleap.com? Okay. So they can go there and then look up Capital Opera and go from there? That's correct. Yes. yes that's okay. exactly correct. Now, um, how many performers are there? In this particular one, there are five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so uh, is that normal for an opera? Is that small? I, well, again, we, I don't really we don't know. always do an opera chorus. This okay. one of these operas has a chorus, but we're not using the chorus. Okay. So, so but sometimes we do. We just did Cavalleria's De Cana in uh, in June and in Harrisburg, and we we did use a chorus for that. Okay. So there there were more, but this with this one we're keeping very intimate. All right, and as far as uh, the location very close by here, yes, and yes. they actually have um, you know, a performance hall there, so it's nice. Yes, that's where we're performing, in Simpson Hall. And we've done that, be we've yes, performed there before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and how often do you do this? I, I seem to think you guys were on about six months ago, am I wrong? Has it been no, longer we do than it, that? we do it every July. Okay, so it has been a while. Yes. All right, and time goes by. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and our, our season usually goes, we do something in May, June, and July, and okay. sometimes in September, and okay. then we're done. Uh, mostly because some of our companies are in uh, areas where the winters are very severe, and so we do everything in the in the more mild months. Yeah. Yes. All right. Very good. So once again, folks, this is uh, next week, Friday and Saturday. Friday the 26th at 7:30, Saturday the 27th at 2:30, right over here at Geneva Presbyterian. You can get uh, uh, online. You can go to TicketLeap to buy tickets. TicketLeap.com or you can just get um, before the door, at the door, you know, come up there a half yes. hour ahead or That's whatever That's right, it might half be. an hour is perfect. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Thank Great. you, Ken. Good to see you. Thank now, you, Ken. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again in about a year. Yes, absolutely. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> At Freedom Village Assisted Living, we provide loving care and support when your loved one needs it most. We believe in laughing more and caring more. Dining will be an experience, not just a meal. We offer opportunities to create new memories. Your family will feel like they are part of our family as we work toward creating an extraordinary difference in lives worth living. To schedule a tour and complimentary lunch, and for more information, please call us at 949-340-8108 or visit our website, freedomvillage.org. Before the next earthquake, take 30 seconds to refresh your memory about these important disaster preparedness tips. Make a family emergency plan. Decide how you'll get in touch with each other, where you'll go, and what you'll do in an emergency. Build a disaster supply kit with enough water, food, and emergency supplies to last at least three days. It's important to have disaster supply kits for work, cars, and pets too. Find and fix items in your home that might hurt someone by moving, breaking, or falling during an earthquake. Know how to react safely when the ground shakes. If you're inside, stay there. Remember to drop, cover, and hold on. Drop down onto your hands and knees and cover your head and neck with your arms to protect yourself from falling objects. If you can move safely, crawl under a sturdy desk or table and hold on to one of the legs until the shaking stops. 
after an earthquake, help people who are hurt or trapped. Call 911 for emergencies only. Check your home for damage, including gas or water leaks, damaged wiring, or downed power lines. Protect your family and your home by making a plan, building a kit, and practicing disaster drills at least twice a year. Be sure to visit ReadyOC.org for more information on emergency preparedness and AlertOC.com to sign up for emergency alerts and notifications. We want you to be prepared for a disaster just as much as you do. Welcome to South County Adult Day Services. Conveniently located right here in Laguna Woods, we provide a safe, secure environment where you or your loved one can spend the day. Come socialize with friends, engage in enriching activities, receive the expert care you need, and participate in fun hobbies. Improve your mental and physical health and maintain your independence. We even take care of transportation. For a free tour, call us at 949-855-9444 or visit us at our center between El Toro and Moulton Parkway right next to the Olive Garden. Maxi Comfort from Golden is the most comfortable lift recliner in the world. Its patented technology glides smoothly into a variety of positions not found on most recliners. Everyone loves the programmable auto drive control. You can lift and recline, watch TV or sleep, and enjoy the feeling of weightlessness in zero gravity. Made by American workers and backed by the industry's best warranties. Feel relaxed in a Maxi Comfort lift recliner. Contact your local Golden retailer today. Well, our movie coming up today is a really different kind of film. It's called Storm Boy. Came out just a few minutes, a, minute, a few months ago, not minutes ago, uh, months ago, and it's an adventure family drama, and uh, it's it's kind of goes back in time when Michael Kingley, a successful retired businessman, starts to see images from his past that he can't explain. He's forced to remember his childhood and how, as a boy, he rescued and raised an extraordinary orphan pelican called Mr. Percival. A uh, good movie. I think you will really enjoy this. And it stars Finn Little, Jai Courtney, and Jeffrey Rush. So it's got an excellent cast in this. And I have not seen this before, but it looks like a really good film. Fairly short, just an hour and 39 minutes. So there you are. That will be on 2 o'clock and at 7 o'clock today. Now our movie coming up on Monday is from 2016 and this is a, a thriller and it stars Helen Mirren and Aaron Paul and Alan Rickman are in there, I should say the late Alan Rickman and it's about uh, Colonel Kathleen Powell, a military officer in command of an operation to capture terrorists in Kenya sees her mission escalate when a girl enters the kill zone triggering an international dispute over the implications of modern warfare. A uh, really intense movie, and I think you will like this one as well. It's got an excellent cast, of course, in this, and uh, I believe it's, a, it's supposed to be British intelligence, with, judging by the cast that is in this. Good movie, and that will be on Monday. It is rated R, and that's really for situations and language more than anything else. So that'll be on Monday. Now, a couple events that are coming up uh, this weekend. Tomorrow, Wellness in the Woods is having their event at uh, Clubhouse 7 from 10 until 2. And this is going to be all about uh, heal great and feel great. So there'll be people on hand to um, give free exams, free ear exams all day. They have some doctors there. And it's really uh, just $7 to get in. And they're going to be having, uh, oh, excuse me, it's only $3 per person at the door. There it is. If you want a lunch, it's then $7. So that'll be tomorrow, Clubhouse 7, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then we'd like to remind you that if you are a tennis fan, the Orange County Breakers, uh, we got these ticket vouchers here, and it gives uh, two people tickets to one of the Breakers' home matches they play down in Newport Beach at the Palisades Tennis Club. So if you are interested, you can email us at lagunawoodsvillagetv.gmail.com. I think we you know, have several of these available, first come, first serve, of course. If you want to find more information about the tennis matches, breakerstennis.com will give you all that. So we got, I don't know how many of these, about, probably about eight of these. So 
If you're a tennis person, this would be a lot of fun to go to. Also, we want to remind you folks that you get a break on whale watching down in Dana Point. The Dana, Por Dana Point whale watching is a lot of fun. It's only $19 for seniors, so that's a $16 savings. And it's any two-hour whale watching cruise from Monday through Friday. And we might be getting at the end of the season. I think it's still going on, but uh, contact DanaWharf.com or 949-496-5794 for more information. All right, uh, the weather. Uh, enjoy today. We got some below normal. We're going to start to ramp that up, though, a little bit more tomorrow, a lot more on Sunday, and then getting into next week. We're going to have some humi humidity coming in, if I can say that. That's kind of normal. As we get to the end of July and August, we get that monsoonal moisture, which also means you'll see uh, the big cumulus clouds and thunderheads in the outlining areas of Riverside County and the local mountains. They could even see some thunderstorms out there next week. Not here, but there. Uh, so you're going to feel that. It's going to Florida weather. If you like Florida weather, we're going to get it next week. Uh, round of the state this weekend, pretty darn nice. Partly cloudy, but that should clear up in the North Coast and the Bay Area. And then everywhere else, just really nice, anywhere from warm to very hot, depending where you go throughout the state. So not bad at all. All right, we'll see you on uh, Monday. You take care.